Commanders hire Dan Quinn to match with their new general manager, Adam Peters, to lead this franchise into the future. The way that we live is not for everybody, okay? It's not, all right? Because we're going to run and put our bodies on people in a violent manner. Whether the team is giving us the highest of highs or the bluest of blues, we'll cover it all here on Commander's Nightly News. I, of course, am your host, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Let's get to tonight's lead story. So, I didn't think I would utter these words at any point this season after the ridiculous start, the historic start that Jaden Daniels got off to this season. But here we are talking about the Offensive Rookie of the Year being in jeopardy. It feels like it's sort of slipping away from him. Bo Nix is playing exceptional football. And every week that I look up, he's playing another team that I expect him to play well against. Last week it was the Raiders. This week it's the Browns. But it's not like Jaden Daniels hasn't had an opportunity to play against Equally lesser opponents. Had the Cowboys last week, didn't take care of business. Have the Titans this week, and not that the Titans are a pushover, just like Cleveland's defense isn't a pushover. But if Jaden wants to build that momentum he had earlier back, because I still think he's ahead, not by much, okay? Jaden's still doing things that few quarterbacks in NFL history have ever done in their rookie season. He just eclipsed over 2,500 yards passing and 500 yards rushing. Fourth quarterback in NFL history to do that. All right. Joining Robert Griffin III, Cam Newton, and Kyler Murray as the only other rookies to do that in their first season in the NFL. So it's it's an elite company that he's in, and he's not done yet. You know, still six more games to go for Jaden Daniels this season, so he can do a lot more damage before it's all said and done. He's still completing the ball at a relatively high percentage. You know, obviously not at the ridiculous torrid clip and pace that he was on to start the season, but... He's still up there. His completion percentage is going to be better than Bo Nix's when this season's done. Nix has passed him in passing touchdowns and total touchdowns, but Jaden had a rushing touchdown last week, and he had two passing touchdowns last week. So he's gaining some steam there, but um, still some work to do in that department. But if he can stay efficient, cut back on the turnovers, those have been a problem here of late. He's had an interception thrown in each of the last two weeks. We'd like to see that, you know, quelled here over the last six games and get back to taking care of the football the way that he was the first nine weeks of the season. Ten, really, if you count the Steelers game. I don't think he threw a pick in that game either. Um, then he'll have less interceptions thrown than Bo Nix. And when it's all said and done, win, right? The Broncos and the Commanders have the exact same record right now at 7-5. and five. So the one thing we had over the Broncos is that, hey, Jaden's leading his team to the playoffs. Well, Bo Nix is in the midst of trying to do that with the Denver Broncos this year. So voters love winners, period. And if they make the playoffs and we don't, Bo Nix is probably going to be your offensive rookie of the year and vice versa. Both teams make it to the playoffs, which is very likely as of right now. Both teams are sitting at 7-5. and five. Both teams are playing, you know, well, not both teams are playing well. The Broncos are playing well right now, but um, still a lot of football left to be decided in, in both conferences. But if both are to make it, then you're going to have to really dig into the performances, how it, how it transpired, and who did what. We're getting into that portion of the season where if Jaden Daniels wants to solidify himself as the offensive rookie of the year this year, he needs to start picking it back up. I think as the calendar turns to December, I've talked about flushing November and embracing December. This is a great opportunity to start that campaign and finish off the job. 
this is an opportunity in this game against the Titans to remind everybody of why this guy was a sensation and must see TV and the talk of the NFL the first six to eight weeks of the season. He built up a massive lead, just like the commanders built up this great start, but just like the commanders have seen their, you know, start chipped away at, so has Jaden in terms of the offensive rookie of the year. But just like the commanders are still in the playoffs, Hunt, right now, and if the playoffs were to start today, they'd be in the postseason. I think Jaden is still holding on to the lead in the offensive rookie of the year you know, conversation, but by a very narrow margin, just like the commanders are holding on to that seventh and final playoff spot in the NFC by a very narrow margin. This is the opportunity to turn it back up and pull away and solidify yourself as the offensive rookie of the year. And I think if he does that, so will this team pull away and solidify themselves as one of the seven playoff participants in the NFC. As he goes, so do we. So I think this is a big game in terms of Jaden Daniels having a chance to wrap up the Offensive Rookie of the Year because I think right now he is the Offensive Rookie of the Year, but Bo Nix, I don't think he's going away, and he's making it damn interesting. Here's an opportunity for Jaden to remind everybody of why he is the Offensive Rookie of the Year. And I can tell you this right now, and I don't speak for any other fan, but I think I feel comfortable in speaking for most of you, but I'm not going to. I'm going to speak for myself. I want this damn award. I want it bad, okay? For the shit that the Bears fans were talking and for as much as Eagles fans and Cowboys fans and Giants fans, not necessarily Giants fans. They really haven't been talking a lot of shit, but it's really been the Cowboys fans, especially the Eagles fans. I need this damn award to stick it to all of them right in their goddamn faces. I need this award. They want Bo Nix to win this badly so they can point and laugh at our guy because they're haters. All the more why... All the more reason why I need it. Go get it, Jaden. Bring it home. In other news, speaking of awards and hardware, I I think this team could be in a position to really net themselves a number of awards and recognition should they finish this season the way that they started it, which was like gangbusters. Again, you got to start somewhere turning this thing around. And no time like the present. Tough opponent at home. You got to have it. In week 13 versus the Tennessee Titans, prior to this bye. I think this buy is going to do wonders for us, but you got to have it this week. I need them to find a way to snap this losing streak and get back in the win column. And if you do that, I think there's a chance that Dan Quinn finds himself in the head coach of the year conversation, that coach of the year conversation that he was squarely in the middle of earlier this season. I think he's fallen out of that race, but he can climb right back in there with a strong finish to the season We'll talk more about that on the other side of this. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to quickly go through the injury report and give you predictions on what I think is ultimately going to happen in terms of guys playing and not playing. Let's start with the good guys real quick. Um, I think this is pretty simple. Barring any setbacks, Austin Eckler and and Andrew Wiley are out. Okay, Those are givens. Um, Ertz, Farrell, playing. Um, Allegretti, Fowler Jr., Igbenogany, McGee playing. Now you focus on the two guys that are the ones to watch this week. Lattimore and Robinson Jr. Um, Let's start with Brian Robinson Jr. I was shocked that he practiced on Wednesday. It leads me to believe 
that there's a realistic shot that he can go on Sunday. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to play. You re-sign uh, re um, Chris Rodriguez. You still have um, Jeremy McNichols. You would need one more back if he can't go. I've always said to you that the activity of the team during the course of the week usually spells the – it usually points to how – they feel about the health of specific players. I.e., if they really didn't think Brian Robinson Jr. had a chance to play, they would have signed a running back, to me, by now, right? Like, they didn't work those two running backs out for no reason. They would have signed one of them if Brian Robinson Jr.'s injury was a little bit more concerning to them. But because... It's not as concerning. They got good news. He feels better than they thought he would at this point. I think that's a sign that he has a realistic shot of playing, and I'm going to go ahead and say he's going to give it a go on Sunday. As for Marshawn Lattimore, Thursday's practice is the big one to watch. If he's able to go on Thursday, I think he's playing on Sunday. I'm going out on a limb and saying that he's going to play on Sunday. Uh, I like the energy from DQ on Wednesday when he spoke about Marshawn Lattimore. Obviously, it was before practice. It was not after practice. So we don't really know how things went. Uh, we saw clips of him, you know, you know, pressing at the line of scrimmage and, and getting off. He looked good. But again, small clips, don't really know, small sample size. Uh, we'll find out more as the week progresses, obviously. But uh, my gut is telling me he's going to play this week. I think he's going to be ready to rock and roll. They're going to roll him out, and uh, he's going to have an impact in his first game as a Washington commander. So uh, this is a great injury report outside of not having your starting right tackle and Austin Eckler as a kick returner and a change of pace back. But uh, we'll make do. We've done it without him before. We can do it again. I, I am a little nervous about Andrew Wiley being out, which <laughs> it I am actually – astonished at the fact that we have gotten to the point that, you know, we need Andrew Wiley. But that's the state of our offensive line. Um, when he got injured earlier this season and we were like, oh, my God, Andrew Wiley could be out. We could be in some trouble. That should let you know that we need to upgrade the offensive line in the offseason. Okay? <laughs> Without question. Anyway, um, let's get to the ops. And I'll, I'll quick. I'll make this short and sweet. I think every single player on this list is playing on Sunday, with the exception of Luke Gifford. Everybody else is going to play, and maybe Leroy Watson, who doesn't make a difference, right? Two two nobodies. Luke Gifford and Leroy Watson might be out, but Arden Key. Uh, Roger McQuarrie, Calvin Ridley, Chadobia Wuzie, Jarvis Brownlee, Tajay Spears, all going to play. And those are all impactful names. So um, the Titans will have everybody all hands on deck, essentially. All hands on deck. So we won't get any breaks. Not looking for any. We need to cause, we need to force and make our own breaks. Not looking for any. Um, and I don't think we're going to get any via injury in this game. So, um, I think that there could be hardware in the future of a lot of people here and, you know, accolades, Pro Bowls, et cetera, all pro potentially, if this team finishes the season strong. I talked about Jaden Daniels uh, needing to, to, you know, reestablish momentum for his Offensive Rookie of the Year campaign. Uh, DQ with some wins here could get right square back in the middle of that coach of the year conversation. He was right there. To me, it's him and Kevin O'Connell three weeks ago, right? When when this team was 7-2 and two and the Vikings were 8-1, and one, um, or I think they were 7-2 and two at that time as well. Uh, we might have been – they probably were – because we played the extra game. I think they had already had their bye. But 
anyway, when we were seven and two and they were either seven and two or eight and two or whatever they were, um, or six and two, um, those two seemed to be the the lead dogs in the race for coach of the year. O'Connell continues to win with Sam Darnold at quarterback. We've cooled off considerably, and it feels like Kevin O'Connell has kind of run away with that thing. But it could change very rapidly, and we could be right back in the mix with, with two or three straight wins, and all of a sudden, you know, this team is 10-5, and five and DQ is right back in that conversation. Who thought that the commanders would be you know, uh, winning 10, 11, 12 games this season, right? Same thing could be said for the Vikings and, you know, their situation with, forget about the fact that it's Sam Darnold. Just look at their roster and their team and what people projected them to be before the season started. It was very similar to us. Look at them. It's hard to imagine Kevin O'Connell not getting that award this year. But, again, you start winning some games here, let the chips fall where they may, you never know. You never know. Our situation was a lot worse than Minnesota's. That's for sure. Minnesota was not a four-win team last year. Minnesota was not considered to be one of the worst-run franchises in football just two years ago. So it's a big difference from where we have come to where we are now versus where the Vikings were last year to where they are now. So um, DQ could get right back into this thing, but obviously going to have to win some games in order for that to take place. You win some games here, and I think you can start having some conversations about guys being pro bowlers, potentially even having an all-pro nod or two. You know, I I don't think we have an all-pro player on our team, but um, I I think if if you finish this season up strong, if you're a Frankie Louvu, you could maybe be in consideration, but um, obviously he's got to get the double digit sacks. He's close, but he's got to finish this season strong. And, you know, it'd be nice to force a fumble or two, pick up a fumble, run something back for a touchdown, pick off a pass or two, something like that, make some more impactful plays. And he could easily look up. He's going to have over 100 tackles before the season's done. You, you, you add in 12 and a half sacks. You know, two forced fumbles. I think he's already recovered one or two fumbles this season. Um, He's got four passes defended. He had three in the game on Sunday versus Dallas. So if that number gets to six or seven, you pick off a pass. Like, Frankie Louvu could easily find himself um, in all-pro discussions at season's end. Um, I wanted to put Sam Cosme in that discussion, but he hasn't been great here of late. You know, um, I need him to step his game back up too. But uh, this is going to be a big week for him. You're playing against Tavondre Sweat, who's about 370 pounds and a tremendous athlete and a road grader in the run game and a space eater and can get to the quarterback as well. And then you're playing also against Big Jeff Simmons. Um, it's going to be a long day if we can't protect up front. If they can't hold the integrity of the pocket, Jaden's probably going to have to vacate because those are some big behemoths inside. And uh, those guys can collapse the pocket. So going to be really interesting to see what Cosme and Biotish and Allegretti do. That's the strength of our offensive line. We feel... And if that's the case, they're going to have their work cut out for them. They've got to show us what they're capable of in this particular game. But in any event, um, going to give away those tickets. All right. Um, so you've got a little bit more time if you're watching this video to um, go back to yesterday's video and use the hashtag. I'm going to do a, a quick video Friday night. All right. Probably Friday night. No, no, no. I'm going to do a quick video Saturday morning, uh, letting the, whomever won the tickets, letting them know they won the tickets. It might be Friday night. Just know I'll have a video up on um, 
social media, my channel somewhere. Um, it'll be on the channel. And it, so it's somewhere, everywhere, somewhere that everyone can access it where you don't have to go searching for it. It'll be on the channel. Um, and it'll be a quick video announcing the winner. And um, you'll then have 24 hours to um, get the tickets. I want to complete this process as quick as possible because it is a holiday weekend and I don't want to be chasing anybody down for tickets. So I'll probably do three winners. And if the first person doesn't claim the tickets within a few hours, I'm going to the next person and then I'm going to the next person and we're going to get rid of these tickets. And if, if after that, nobody claims the tickets, I'm going to just do a quick little flash giveaway like I do on my community wall where I give you a trivia question and the first person to answer it correctly gets the tickets. Like we got, we're not going to make this a long drawn out process. Uh, I dropped the ball the last time I was giving tickets away. Um, the winner, you know, was ready to claim the tickets. I was off doing my thing and I was out of the office and totally forgot. Then when I remembered it was the day of the game and I couldn't get in contact with either of the two winners. And so I ended up doing a flash giveaway. So uh, that's on me, but I'm going to be out of the office this time, but I'm setting alarms on my phone to remind me to give those tickets away. So I'm going to make sure that that process um, is, uh, is, is, is I'll make sure that I see that process through all the way. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to the game plan for the Tennessee Titans in this week 13 matchup. Um, this is a big game. I, I don't have to tell you that, you know, things are getting really interesting. We're now past Thanksgiving. We're into December. Shit gets real now. And every game counts. Not that the ones before didn't, but now what's in the past is in the past. We can only control what is in front of us. We have to start winning football games, especially against three-win teams. We had a three-win team come into our building last week and beat us. We cannot have a three-win team come into our building for a second consecutive week and beat us. If that happens, we are not a playoff team. Simple as that. You can't lose to three win teams in consecutive weeks and call yourself a playoff team. That's not what playoff teams do. So this team has to man up and find a way to snap this three-game losing streak. And these are the keys to doing exactly that. You want to unlock that door, here are the keys to do that. We we'll start with the offensive keys to victory, and, and you start with, Remain balanced, convert on third downs, win time of possession. These are all things that we were doing at a very high clip early in the season. We've gotten away from that a bit. And this is a Titans team that features a top 10 um, rush defense and the number one pass defense in football and the number two overall defense in football. So, Remaining balance is going to be tough if you don't set the tone. If you let them dictate to us what we are capable of doing, if they set things to their terms and say, nope, you're not running the ball today, all you can do is throw, and we got the number one pass defense, so good luck, we could be in trouble. If we can't establish some semblance of a run game, some semblance of balance, and we get out of whack and you find yourself constantly fighting an uphill battle on third and seven, eight, nine, ten, we could be in trouble. Because if we can't remain balanced, get into manageable third down situations and convert them, because we've been, like, here's the thing, we've been in manageable third down situations the last two weeks against Philadelphia and against Dallas. We just didn't convert. We just haven't converted. So we have to be able to convert on third downs. And if you can convert on third downs, you're, that's going to lend itself to you controlling time of possession, which was one of our biggest assets earlier in the season. Look, if we're scoring points, then I don't care about time of possession. If you're scoring touchdowns, 
I don't care if you got a two play drive, sixty seven yard touchdown. Just put the points on the board, right? But if we're not getting those explosive plays, if we're not being dynamic in that regard, then you need to be eating up clock while you matriculate the ball down the field. And I said convert on third downs, and I put no less than 45%. Right now we're converting third downs at what? 42%? Something like that. I believe, 43, somewhere in there. 45%, no less than that. I really want 54%. 45 is 5 of 11. I really want 6 of 11. That's what I really want. That's 54%. But I'll take 5 of 11, 45%. I'll take it. But I want 6 of 11. Or better. Or better. Hell, why not go 9 of 11? This is one of the best third down defenses in football. We we already established that. They're stingy. They, I think they're the second best third down defense. We talked about that yesterday. They're not giving it up on third downs. That's how you get the number one pass defense. That's how you get the number eight rush defense. That's how you get the number two overall defense in the NFL. By stopping drives. It's not going to be easy. Okay? None of the things I just requested are going to be easy. Remaining balance against a team that stops the run and the pass. Gives up the second fewest yards in the NFL. Convert on third downs. It's the second best third down defense in the NFL. And win time of possession. Um, Last time I checked, they're a top 10 time of possession team in the NFL. We aren't. So all of those those things are going to be tough. But they're not impossible. Next offensive key, at least four trips to the red zone, three of which need to result in touchdowns. We got to get back to getting into the red zone, sustaining offense, sustaining drives, scoring points. We really haven't done that since the Steelers game. It's been two weeks, and really, it's been probably a month that Giants game, because the Steelers game, we had some drives, but we had an explosive to Terry that set up a touchdown. We had their, their, their um, them going for it on a, a fake punt and not converting that set us up for a touchdown. Like, they helped us out. We made some plays, too. But we need to get in the red zone. Hey. How many times did we make it in the red zone against Dallas? Twice, I guess, maybe? I think we made it twice. The Jaden run for the touchdown and then the the Ertz touchdown at the end. I think that was the only two times we made it to the red zone. The other two, the other two scores were outside of the red zone. Thirty-three yard, we attempted a field goal, and then uh, the other field goal. Both of them were for fifty-one, if I'm not mistaken. I think the first field goal, though, we had to be close to the red zone. I don't think we made it quite into the red zone. We might have been just outside of the red zone, or we might have just made it into the red zone. But we need four trips to the red zone, and I'd love to score on all four of them, but no less than three. No less than three touchdowns. Next offensive key, this is a big one, and it's a big one every week, but it, we really got to get back to this, and that's protecting Jaden and the Duke. The protection hasn't been great here of late, and obviously we haven't been taking care of the football, turned it over three times against Dallas. Um, that is uncharacteristic of us, or two times. Jaden had two interceptions in the game, and then um, I think we had a third turnover, right? If I'm not mistaken, I um, thought we had three turnovers to Dallas's one because we were minus two in the plus minus category. Um, so there has to be another turnover in there that I'm not thinking about. I don't know where it came from, but there must have been another turnover. Um 
I'm trying to think. Where where did the other turnover come from? I know Eckler fumbled. Oh, John Bates fumbled. That's right. I'm about to say. I know we had another turnover. Eckler fumbled, but we recovered that one. So um, we got to protect the Duke. You know that that's top priority along with protecting Jaden. He got sacked four times last week, but he really only got sacked once. You know, um, the other three were, you know, him running out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage type of deals. But we got to be better. He needs to be comfortable back there. He needs to be able to survey the field and, and you know, get the ball to the right guys. And we got to not, we got to be able to be mistake free. We got to, you know, take care of the football. Take care of Jaden. Take care of the football. Let the Titans implode and make mistakes. That's a team that is one of the most penalized teams in the league. That's one of the teams that turns it over the most in football. Let them do those things. Let them show why they're a three-win team. Last offensive key, bring back the explosive plays. Bring back the explosives. Explosive, explosive. I need four plays of 20 yards or more in this game. Everything's been tough for us of late. You know? Everything's been tough. Nickel and diamond, you know, it's just been hard. Early in the season, there were explosive plays. You know, like I said, the Steelers game, we we had explosive plays in that game. You know, Terry had a couple of big catches in that game. We had some plays in that game, but... Um, we really haven't had any plays the last two weeks, and and the offense is really bogged down because of it. You're you're really relying on us, you know, driving the football down the field every single possession, and it's tough. Now the Cowboys game, we had great field position. There's no excuse. There was no excuse for what we did in that game. We had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to make something happen, and we just did it. And and, that, and there's no excuse for that. But um, it would be nice to have some explosive plays, you know, a 45-yard touchdown strike, a 33-yard run, right? Those are nice. We had one big play against Philadelphia, and that was the Austin Eckler catch and run. Uh, but that was it. You know, in, in this game against Dallas, we had the Terry McLaurin play. That was it at the end of the game. Like, everything else was like nickel and dime, nickel and dime. The Deami Brown had a deep dig. That might have been the, the next big play. And then Jaden had a run late in the ball game. That might have been like 24 yards or so. But we got to get these earlier in the game, right? And, and we got to get some big ones. So uh, four or more plays of 20 yards. And I'm hoping two or three of them are big, big ones that lead to touchdowns or do score touchdowns themselves. Um, defensive keys. First one, slow down the Titans' rushing attack. Um, that's something that I ask this defense to do every week, and we just haven't done it, right? We just aren't a good rush defense right now. We're, you know, third worst in, in the NFL, second worst, one of the two. We're giving up 145 yards a game. Um, I want to give up 123 yards or less in this game. I think we're fully capable of doing that, and um, – Again, no time like the present. Uh, they got to step up at some point. And, and I think Marshawn Lattimore's presence, because I expect him to play, and I'll be disappointed if he doesn't. But if he doesn't play, I, I, I understand why they did it, and he'll be back post by. But um, if he plays, that should allow you to be even more aggressive in your run defense. So um, 123 yards or less given up in this game is what I'm aiming for for this defense. Um, ball is life. Special teams be nice. That is the next uh, defensive key. Um, look, ball has to be life in this game. Will Levis has been a turnover machine. The Titans have turned the ball over. Tony Pollard can and will fumble. There are opportunities for mistakes to be made by the Tennessee Titans, but we have to force the issue, something we haven't done well enough this season, especially here of late. The ball has to be life. They are minus 12 in the plus minus category. I, look, last week, I was so disappointed in our inability to take advantage of opportunities. You block a punt, you block a field goal, you, you know, rip a fumble out, and you got great field position all first half, you come away with three points. 
That can't happen again. And this time, we got to take care of the ball on our end, but we also got to force more turnovers. This is a t Titans team that has turned it over relentlessly this season, and a lot of them going straight to the house, directly adding to the scoreboard, right? We, we can use one of those. We've had one turnover go for a touchdown defensively this year. Why not make it a second in this game? Special teams, the Titans have been awful on special teams this year. They've had a punt block for a touchdown. Um, they've, they gave up a big punt re uh, kickoff return um, uh, on Sunday uh, last week against the, the Texans. I think they can be had on special teams. Let's make a big play in this game. All right, let's make a big play on special teams. Um, I, their, their punt returner, he looks a little suspect. I, I think he might fumble this week. Let's, let's, let's jump on one, right? Let's make something happen. Defensive keys. Third defensive key, limit the explosive plays. The Titans live and die by the big play on offense with Will Levis at the helm. Um, they're, they're not an offense that's going to grind you out and put up a bunch of points. When they score a lot of points like they did on Sunday last week in Week 12 versus the Texans, it's because they're hitting on big plays. Will Levis hit uh, Westbrook Akine for a 40-plus yard touchdown pass. Um, Will Levis hit uh, Calvin Ridley for a 50-plus yard play that set up a touchdown. Will Levis hit uh, Chig Okwankwo on a shallow cross that he ended up running for a 70-yard touchdown. They live on big plays. He hit uh, Nick Westbrook Akina for a 96-yard touchdown against the Vikings uh, a couple weeks ago. Like, this is what they do. Big plays are their forte. The last time we played the Titans, we gave up a 71-yard pass to Nick Westbrook, or I think it was 62 yards, excuse me, to Nick Westbrook Akina that set up, um, you know, the game-winning score. So. We know that Nick Westbrook Aquina can hurt us, and we need to be prepared to stop the big play. Make them earn it because Will Levis is one of those guys that the more you make him snap it, the more chances you give him to make a mistake. The more chances you give the Titans to have a holding penalty or a legal formation or a legal shift or something that derails their drive. But you can't give up the big plays. You cannot do it in this game. That's one of their calling cards. That's how they operate. And then lastly, the last defensive key, four quarters. I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. Like this, this one, I, I can't stress this enough. Four quarters, not three, not three and a half, not three and three quarters, not three and seven eighths, four quarters of relentless energy that results in less than 20 points given up. This defense has been good for a quarter. This defense has been good for a half. This defense has been good for three quarters. This defense has been good for three and a half quarters. This defense has been good for three and four fifths quarters. But this defense has not been good for four quarters since week seven against Carolina. Okay? We've had games where they were solid. You know, Chicago, they were great for three quarters. Philadelphia, they were great for three and a half quarters, or three quarters. Let's just call it three quarters. They kind of imploded in the fourth quarter, right? Um, the Pittsburgh game, they were really good for probably two quarters of that game. The other two quarters, not so much, right? Um, and, and then obviously the, the game on Sunday against Dallas, they imploded in the fourth quarter, right? They, really, the second half, they were spotty. And we won't say they imploded, but they were spotty. Um, you gave up the touchdown right after we scored a touchdown. You give up a touchdown immediately, right? You give up a field goal in the fourth quarter, and then the, the offense turns it over, and you give up a touchdown on a third and long, right? This defense has to be relentless for four quarters. And if you do that, and, and, and it results in the Titans scoring right around their average, which is 18 points a game, we should be victorious. But you have to bring it for four quarters quarters from start to finish you can't let up and you can't take your foot off the gas that's been something that's plagued this defense all season long minus the Arizona Cleveland and and Carolina games so those are your keys to victory 
Um, and if they, if look, we were as bad as we've ever been in the keys to victory department um, in week 12 versus Dallas. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, we got to bounce back. This has to be a bounce back week. I'm begging you guys to bounce back this week. Um, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not super confident this week. This is a tough, tough uh, game. And with the way we're playing, it's, it might be even tougher than it needs to be. Um, but I think this is a game that we can get. I don't think we're going to cover the spread right now. It's at five and a half. I don't think we're going to cover that spread. I always tell you, buy the half point, get it to six. Um, I, I don't see us covering the spread. Um, but I do see us winning this game, and that's all I care about. 27 to 22, the Commanders hold off the Tennessee Titans, who make a late charge in this game. But the Commanders hold on and remain victorious and uh, get back uh, to their winning ways, snap their three-game losing streak, head into the bye with good vibes, and uh, we all get to smile heading into the bye week uh, and, and hoping for a strong finish to this regular season. So tell me what you think. Score and more. Leave it down in the comment section. What do you think is going to happen in this game? Will the commanders snap their three-game losing streak? Will they make it four straight losses? What do you see happening? Make sure that you're uh, staying tapped in to the um, channel when I uh, announce the winner of the tickets so you can claim those tickets, trying to get those things up off me quickly so I'm going about my day and enjoy the rest of my weekend. So uh, score more. Leave it in the comment section. Can't wait to read your responses. I have a lot of time on my hands, so I'll probably be reading a lot of what you guys have to say in the comment section, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say. That said... That's going to do it for me, your man, Louis T. Hope your Thanksgiving weekend is going splendidly, and I look forward to hearing about it on the other side of the weekend. Hopefully, when we speak the next time, we're talking about a commander's dub, and we're getting off the schneid and getting back to our winning ways. The month of December is going to be great for us. I'm speaking it into existence. Flush November, and let's embrace December. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Enjoy your weekend. You know what it is. Anybody, anytime, or anybody, anywhere, anytime. Let's take care of business. I'll see you next time. Take care. Here comes the diesel. Here comes the diesel. There's the snap. Hand to Riggins. Good hole. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35.